Here we are a week into August and all I have is this Z9. Why is Nikon taking so long to deliver the perfect camera? Where's the fabled Z8? Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me for this summer chat. Well, according to rumors and from a reliable source, the long wait is over. The Z8, or maybe it's not the Z8, maybe something else, is about to be released or maybe announced or pre-announced or something. <laughs> to be honest, I've avoided this subject for the last year or so, the Z8 rumor mill, because it's been around the block a few times in the interim. And as far as I know, Nikon has never mentioned, intimated, or in any way promised a camera between the Z7, Z7 II, and the Z9. So I think what's happened here is that the anticipated Z8 has turned into a kind of aggregate fantasy for a camera or the features and specs of a camera that a number of photographers dream of, including me. Sure, when the Z9 first began to take shape in people's minds after the initial announcement, I expressed my wish list, which included better video specs and didn't include an integrated vertical grip. I was hoping to hang on to the weight savings of a smaller form factor I'd come to appreciate with mirrorless cameras in general. The Z6 was actually heavier than my first Fuji mirrorless camera. And having used the Z9 for going on five months now, I'd give up the vertical grip and extra buttons for weight reduction. I know a lot of people like the added heft of the Z9, but my arthritic wrists don't. And I have to admit, I use very little in the way of its more specialized features. So you might ask, why did I buy a Z9? Well, like my Z6s for the video functions, in particular, 8K video. Not necessarily raw, because I don't use that often, but the resolution, which is a great benefit in editing. In terms of cropping and zooming on a 4K timeline, that's awesome and something I'm not willing to sacrifice. It was on my wish list from day one. Check out my videos from the time. Okay, looks like I'm on the bandwagon. So belatedly, what would I want or not want in a Z8? Well, here's something else I wished for from the get-go. Dynamic range. I'm not sure that's something we got with the Z9. Certainly the images are nice, but they don't exhibit that next level look that I think a lot of us frustrated medium format shooters long for. <laughs> I know that 35 millimeter sensors are limited in other ways as far as producing that special sauce that can only come from a larger format camera. That's the topic for another video and actually one I've been working on off and on for months. And I'm not convinced by what I call mini medium format cameras like the Fuji GFX system as nice as they are. But I don't want to get off too much on a tangent here. I do think that it's possible to make a 35 millimeter full frame camera that with the right lenses can compete with medium format at a relative economical advantage. Maybe I'm just dreaming. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I just don't want to accept that what I'm after isn't available for under 50 grand. But I don't think I'm alone in this dream. Matt Irwin, there's no doubt that what we've got in the Z lenses, designed around that big mount, and modern corrections technology are capable of producing the most extraordinary images. Is a camera alone the wrong place to be looking for that? Maybe. Probably that's why I haven't brought my video on medium format to the channel. I'm not sure my ideas hold water from a technical standpoint. What I do know is that I still get a thrill out of scanning and printing my medium format work from decades back that I shot on film. Anyway, back to the mythical Z8. Lighter. I want lighter. How about that sensor? I know some people are willing to sacrifice pixels. I'm not in that camp. I think it would have to be at least 45, 47 megapixels. I'd lean more towards the 61 or so megapixels because cropping. Though I retain the crop-in-camera ethos of the film days. I mean, 
get your framing right the first time so you don't lose resolution and magnify grain in the darkroom. For me, the thing that often comes into play in the digital darkroom is whether cropping in on a hummingbird or correcting parallax in an urban landscape. I like lots of wiggle room in that sense. So yeah, give me mega megapixels for that reason alone. What I don't care about, and I think the competition in this area has reached its sensible limit, is frames per second for photos. And certainly Canon, Sony, and Nikon have addressed that niche. At some point, long before 190 frames per second or whatever, all those stills become video. <laughs> I know that there are people who want 30 frames per second or more in RAW, and I acknowledge that for some, that's every bit as important as my pixel count and weight consideration. Though I autofocus, whether for people, cats, dogs, and extraterrestrials, has never been a big thing for me, I think it makes sense to include improvements in that area. I may yet be <laughs> convinced to move into the 21st century. In the end, it comes down to what Nikon thinks is marketable. It's a bit like following your audience on YouTube, <laughs> hence this video. There's been a lot of discussion about form factor, and a lot would depend on those video specs, I think. The Z9 obviously needed that larger body to do what it's done with video, record 8K60 for extended periods with no overheating issues. So I got what I asked for. Would I be willing to compromise on video to get the other things I'd want in a Z8? Yes, I'd settle for less, maybe 6K, 30P, there's no doubt you could still have 10-bit internal recording with a smaller form factor. Other cameras do it. No problem. I'd even settle for external recording for RAW if it came down to it. But the camera should be ready to do that without additional cost. Ironically, the Z9 has lightened the load when it comes to recording better quality video uh, run and gun because I can shoot 10-bit or RAW without dragging an external recorder and other peripherals along. So for that reason, I'm not immediately thinking of trading the Z9 for a Z8, if there's such a thing. Obviously the Z9 is a terrific camera. The build is truly professional. And I'd hope any prosumer type camera from Nikon would maintain that advantage. It's worth the premium to me. The lack of ruggedness for cameras like the ZFC and Z30 is what made me hesitate there. I don't think I'd consider them for anything more than studio and occasional recreational use, whatever that is. I guess my point is that for my use case, I want a camera that I don't have to babysit, though I'm extremely careful with my gear. And I want a camera that's more oriented to landscape and studio uh, than sports and wildlife. I've shot a, a, a lot of those, and the Z9 is surely the answer to those genres. I think a lot of people are still waiting for what they see as the mirrorless answer to the D850 DSLR. I think the Z9 is that, and more. But I also think there's room for something between the Z7 II and Z9. And I agree, it makes numerical sense for that camera to be called the Z8. Again, my Z8 would have reasonably decent video capabilities, at least uh, internal 10-bit. And there could be more options in that area, I think, without putting too much demand on the processor, uh, presumably the X-Speed 7. And RAW? Well, hopefully the red lawsuit kerfuffle will get sorted. Again, I don't care personally about 190 frames per second RAW for stills. Um, even though I like to photograph hummingbirds, I'm guessing we're past mechanical shutters but I'm agnostic as far as that goes as well. But the elimination of the mirror box and shutter mechanism obviously aids in designing a more compact camera. At the end of the day, Nikon is gonna decide what camera best meets the needs of its customers. Mirrorless is the future in this market segment, naysayers aside. And the Nikon naysayers are unlikely to be swayed by anything Nikon offers. <laughs> Just yesterday, I watched one of YouTube's biggest influencers reiterate that they didn't like Nikon. No reason given, just an off-the-cuff dismissal. I don't get that at all. When it comes to 35mm, I've been predominantly a Nikon shooter for more than four decades. But I've owned 
and used a half dozen other brands, including Minolta, Konica. Actually, Minolta and Konica merged, if I recall, and Minolta was then absorbed by Sony. Anyway, I like my Minolta camera, the first uh, autofocus I'd used. I like my Konica, made some of my best mountaineering images with that camera. I haven't really done more than play with a borrowed Canon, but I really like Canon's ergonomics and UI, and I was often jealous <laughs> of colleagues' images made with their EOS systems. Aside from some minor UI irritants, I really like my Fuji cameras, both SLR and mirrorless. They helped me make some good photos, it made me money. Sony has made some excellent cameras and they've pushed technology, particularly mirrorless, forward. I like Sony. I don't like glib celebrities who, with one fatuous pronouncement, lead their followers astray. I mean, who cares if I like this thing or that? Personally, I'd hope that, um, and I, I give credit to my audience, that my personal preferences, uh, Z8 with 60 megapixel sensor or whatever, aren't the be-all and end-all when it comes to camera technology. As I've mentioned in so many words before, I'd never want to attract a cult following that hangs on my every word. Really, what kind of self-absorbed prat blithely makes statements like that? What did Nikon do to attract their wrath? Ignore them? I know this is kind of old, but it's so strange. I don't know why Nikon attracts this kind of thing. It boggles. Anyway, Someone must like Nikon. Their latest financials point to a sharp rise in operating profit and revenues, up to 48%, I think. Well, whatever product Nikon announces this month or next, whenever it's available within the constraints of this present world situation, <laughs> which, let's face it, has more pressing problems than frames per second and pixel density. I hope it's a good camera because I like Nikon. I like Nikon because their innovations have helped me to explore my world, have over the decades made cameras I could afford, with which, when I was smart, I paid the rent. I mean, what's not to like? In the end, I'm not going to worry or actually dislike some poor fop who's lost track of which end of the camera's which. We love our cameras, and we can get a bit tribal. We're not so far from the safe treetops that we descended from. If Nikon doesn't announce a new camera this month or this year, it won't be the end of the world. I've got a half dozen cameras, not a lot, <laughs> I know, that I don't use to their full potential. The question is, am I performing to my potential? And that's a real question for me as age forces me to redefine what my potential is. Come to think of it, I'm still inspired as I was when I was 30, by the incredible work of elder photographers like Andre Cortez, Manuel Alvarez Bravo, W. Eugene Smith, who made some of the greatest photographs ever well into their dotage, and I'm pretty sure it never occurred to them to waste their time brand bashing. They just got on with their work. Steve McCurry with his Nikon FM2, Henri Cartier-Bresson with his Leica M2. Eugene Smith with his Minolta SRT 101, among actually many other brands Smith used to create some of the most stunning and socially evocative images of the 20th century. Sebastio Salgado with his Canon EOS 1DS Mark III. Now, I can't be sure that none of these heavyweights ever said a disparaging word about this camera or that. But my point remains. If you've seen any of my videos on this general topic, I think technology is integral to photography. Photography doesn't exist without it and is potentially enhanced by new developments. It isn't advanced at all and the practice may well be disadvantaged by the spread of shallow celebrity culture. Though that could certainly be the subject of a photo essay. Blame it on <laughs> Andy Warhol. Just as with any camera so far, not everyone is going to get everything they want and whatever comes next in the Z series. What are you hoping for? Let's continue the conversation in the comments. Do you think we'll get a new camera this month? A Z8? A Z something 3? Personally, I don't. But I've been wrong before. Well, this is a beautiful evening worth a photo or two. 
I hope that this video was worth something, maybe a like. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Until the next time, take care of yourself, cheers, and we'll see you later.